Lords, ladies and gentlemen, it's profile time. Now, this week, there is a birthday. It's a 74th birthday for one of the legends, the true greats of the English game. And a knight of the realm. It's Sir Bobby Charlton. Ooh, <laughs> I thought you were going to go for Don Hutchinson. <laughs> <Massive. laughs> That's not good enough for a knight of the realm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, an old fashioned sporting hero, I think we can all agree. Uh, he was born on the 11th of October, 1937. 30 years before the summer of love. There you go. Yeah, Easy yeah. one. Yeah. Um, uh, he was in his peak during the summer of love. Yeah, he would have been. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, as I say, an world old champion. Yeah. In the summer of love, yeah. No, the Scots were the world champions in 1960. Oh, yeah, that's right, right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a real gentleman, true gent, uh, a fantastic player, and just went about his uh, profession with modesty and much aplomb, I think mm. we can agree. He almost feels like football's granddad now, doesn't Mr. he? Mr. Football. Yeah. Because there's no yeah. more Sir Bobby, that's why Sir Bobby Robson. So now he's the, he's the one who stepped into his shoes, mm. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Another Sir Bobby? Yeah. Okay. Sir Bobby Shoes. Charlton was born into a footballing family with a number of his relatives being professional footballers, including a certain Jackie Milburn, Newcastle legend. Mm. Oh yeah, that kind of makes it sound like he was born, like like subbed on, like immediately <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> out of his mother's womb yeah. into a footballing family. I like that. Uh, now, um, I'd uh, be proud to sit on that bench. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos Tevez. <Yeah. laughs> uh, Charlton was picked for England schoolboys uh, to play against Wales, obviously when he was very young. Now in those days, they got huge crowds for these games, well into the tens of thousands sometimes, and uh, people saw what a good player he was at such a young age. And well, word got round to many clubs. Apparently, they had loads of scouts coming round to the family home to inquire about a young Bobby Charlton. His mother remembered this, saying, "I'd be cleaning the fireplace in the morning, and I'd look round, and there'd be another one of them standing in the." Kitchen behind me. There were times when we had How'd one. They get in. <laughs> well, people didn't used to lock their front oh, doors, yeah. did they? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. There'd be one in the front room and one in the kitchen. Talking about agents and scouts. Yeah. And I, I, call, I, I like the idea of that because um, these days it's all about. So it seems a bit like sub, a bit like subterfuge. Like, oh, they promised a family a car. Mm. And, and oh, you got it. There was plenty of that going on. Yeah, but old school. It seems a little. It probably <laughs> wasn't, but it seems a bit more respectful back in those I days. Think, yeah. I think, see the mum and dad. See how they're getting on. I think, he's, I think the mum said that uh, one scout said he promised us double the amount of what the highest uh, offer had been so far but it didn't ask what that amount was so you oh, could have yeah. taken them for absolute <laughs> yeah. it's brilliant mm. um, uh, so, <laughs> so uh, Charlton uh, when he was young he loved to watch uh, the great Sir Stanley Matthews play of course and uh, he studied the way he played and, and Charlton said it was from Sir Stanley Matthews that I learned how to find space how to beat an oppo- opponent how to put defenders off balance and how to time my runs and you could see that in his style of play which um, we'll, we'll talk it's about it's annoying because I've watched footballers loads and I'm not going to learn a damn thing <laughs> yeah. it, Portsmouth yeah that's true yeah, um, yeah. yeah. so he Oh. Yeah. He signed professional forms for Matt Busby's Manchester United when he was 17. Scored two goals on his debut against Charlton. Cool. Oh, that, there you go. Mm. You know, Charlton scoring against Charlton. Did you get that, Jim? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a very was... simple word. Is <laughs> <laughs> Comedic leap. There you go. Uh, this was the era of the famous Busby Babes. United won the league that season and Charlton scored 10 goals in 14 games. Um, of course, and then in February uh, 1958, Charlton was involved in the tragic events of the Munich uh, disaster, where eight of his teammates were, mm. were killed. And Charlton was just 20 years old uh, when he survived the crash. And the mental scars uh, he must have received from these awful events cannot be under- underestimated. You know, no. he only just switched seats, didn't he? Because like the, yeah, right, yeah. Cause it was an aborted takeoff, and mm. he sort of there was an excellent BBC documentary. I uh, sorry, not documentary, BBC uh, dramatization of it, mm. um, where um, Dougray Scott played Matt Busby. Mm. But the report, the uh, didn't one of the, didn't the goalkeeper Harry Gregg end up sort of dragging a lot of them from the wreckage I think, so. I think it, Charlton it, went back in as well didn't he when he was dragged out or something like that well I think Harry, Harry Gregg I think Harry Gregg was reported to say he thought Ch- Charlton had died because yeah, he was, right, he was yeah. unconscious but then when he came back he was actually up and about again but mm. he was in the hospital for a week or so wasn't he absolutely horrible I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you just words can't describe it so uh, Busby himself near, uh, barely survived mm. um, and had the sort of really hard task of rebuilding the team you know. they um, got to the FA Cup final that season didn't yeah, they they did yeah they got unfortunately they, they lost yeah, but yeah lost he, to Bolton they did yeah uh, Nat Lofthouse I think yeah. um, he built the, re- uh, the team around Bobby Charlton who became a big figure in the club's resurgence um, Charlton was played out wide a lot uh, by Busby but he brought him into the centre of the field just kind of behind the forwards attacking midfielder which got the best out of Charlton I, th- I think we can agree uh, absolutely pivotal in, in the team's attacks there mm. great passer of the ball decent in the tackle very comfortable on the ball uh, a lot of skill speed could absolutely wang it as well what a shot <laughs> yeah. what and a shot let, let's, yeah. it's, 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 people probably realise this but let's just make it completely clear yeah. the balls were heavy then <laughs> yeah. especially when it was raining and you most imagine of the how times, hard he could ping it now and most of the times when he saw those clips 
moments where he'd just absolutely pang it in the top. He'd get top left as well. It wouldn't be just no, like yeah, it. It would be, but he'd um, he'd have only run about thirty yards. My yeah. granddad said. My granddad said when he played football when he was young because they're about the same age. Right. He'd go out for a header and it, he'd have a proper headache for like the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, just heading the ball. Not worth doing. <laughs> yeah. well, they had lasers in them at, at times, didn't they? Yeah. No, but it, he had those shots that would just keep rising. You know, that's the, yeah, that's the sign yeah, of a properly yeah, yeah. belted shot. <laughs> yeah. mm. And what was really impressive as well. I mean, you look at the old fit, footage of players like this, and particularly sort of in the English league, just because of the weather, the pitches were so bad. Yeah. A player like Bobby Charlton and, and George Best as well, the, the, the skills they had, they were really put to the test yeah, by the yeah. pitches a lot of the time. Totally, yeah. an excellent point, yeah. Uh, he got his first England cap in 1958, uh, playing as a more defensive midfielder, selected to go to the World Cup in Sweden in, in 1958, but didn't play. Played at the 62 World Cup, um, and then won the FA Cup in 1963 and the league in 1965 with Manchester United. But let's go to 1966, uh, where of course, we don't do that enough here. Do no, we? We don't. he's so good, Bobby Charlton. That we just gloss on over league titles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one, won that, won that, won that, won that. 1966. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he, uh, our proud lion. <laughs> <laughs> Much fewer yeah. matches as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to win a win. Yeah. Forget what you heard at the start of the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, just before the World Cup, he was named Football Writers Player of the Year and would later be named European Footballer of the Year. He was 28 going into that tournament. A 28 year old Peak. Bobby Charlton. Peak. Oh, look, hair like a 50 year old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> swept over beautifully. Lulled him into a yeah. full sense of security. You, yeah, you look at you look at his hair when he was younger, and oh, I yeah. sort of look, see a lot of his hair in my hair, and I think, <laughs> oh God. There's a great picture of him uh, convalescing after the Munich Edison. <laughs> Where he's in the alley um, playing with a bunch of kids. Oh, that's right. He's got a wonderful quiff, wonderful <laughs> quiff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think Bobby Charlton's hair just really kind of epitomises how much he wouldn't give up on a lost cause. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's a real winner's yeah, attitude. Yeah, yeah. He won that hair. Skillful with the ball, skillful with the brush. <laughs> Leave it, let it go. I can win it back. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't over hair. It's all about percentages. In a way, with his haircut, he invented the pressing game. <laughs> That's right, yeah. yeah. And, and, the, and the side sweep. Um, he, uh, England drew their first game 0 0 at uh, the 1966 World Cup, and they needed something to spark their campaign. And the, the second game yeah, against Mexico, good yeah, in the second game against Mexico, it happened. He scored, yeah, the only goal of the game, wasn't it? Bobby's Belter. Yeah. I think it was 2 0. Oh, it was 2 0, sorry, yeah. It was a great hit, anyway. Oh, my God. It, I love this. He said, um, I picked the ball up quite deep, and I had no intention of shooting at goal. I didn't really expect them to allow me to keep going, so I just banged it. <laughs> <laughs> I like the thought of Alf Ramsey going bang it yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know it reminds me of when you know Steven Gerrard when he scored that goal in the FA Cup final to equalise West Ham yeah. yeah. the worst thing about that was the real sickness of 